guys, it's your favorite desert dweller, Sarah here with a special car review. This is a 2019 Subaru Forester. And for those of you new to my channel and you not seen my past videos, I own a 2015 Subaru Forester XT, who I call Forester Gump. <laughs> be unlike any other review here on YouTube for the new generation Subaru Forester because it's an actual Forester owner reviewing the new generation and on top of that this is an off-road review so I'm gonna give it hell in the dirt <laughs> Before I head out to my rally special stage here in the deserts of Arizona, I want to point out the main differences that I like, I don't really care for, and stuff that I found strange about this new generation Forester. Starting out with the interior, this is the number one pro about the new generation Forester is the amount of tech that is packed into this vehicle. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, this nice touchscreen unit, has radar cruise control, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic, all the tech safety features you would expect. It does have a Carmen Hardon, Hart, Harman Cardon. Come again. Harman Cardon audio system, wow. And uh, it is amazing. I actually really like the audio system that came in this. Now, as far as the overall look, I'm not a fan of this weird honeycomb tracksuit looking material here. The silver polka dotted trim above the glove box and over here on the left of the steering wheel, that it just looks tacky. The hazard button here by the HVAC climate control is really cute. I love the shape of it. Subaru always has cute hazard buttons in their interiors. Even though Subaru said they killed off the Forester XT, one thing I did notice back here on the rear of the vehicle is there is a piece of plastic that is removable over here to add a second exhaust tip, which you usually only had the dual exhaust on the XT models. So they left it open for a possibility of a second exhaust tip. As far as the rest of the cargo and convenience stuff goes, it doesn't really feel any different than the previous SJ generation. There might be minor differences, but from a previous generation Forester, I don't really think you're gonna notice much of a difference here on the interior. So uh, enough about that stuff. Let's get to the important bits. Let's rally this bad chicken in the dirt. <laughs> since the first SF generation Forester that came out in 1998 I've loved the styling each time it gets revised I feel this is a vehicle it just gets better with age as far as looks go I have to say if I pin down my favorite looks wise would be the SH generation which was discontinued in 2013 I feel that one had this kind of muscular almost European kind of style to it and it was a good-looking crossover the SJ I love the styling obviously because I own one but the XT, how it had that aggressive, I'm gonna eat your face looking front bumper, I thought that was pretty sick. And now on this generation, it's just kind of bland. Subaru played it a little too safe with this generation, I feel styling wise. Subarus are supposed to be ugly and then they get attractive over time. You're like, man, I didn't like that style at first, but now I get it. This one, there's nothing crazy about it. I'm gonna get out real quick and show you where I'm at. Oh man. It's super sketchy when you're driving down the road because it's only wide enough for like one and a half cars, so you have to go slow when another car goes by you. Oh man. Welcome to this edition of Garage Time with Sarah. <laughs> my garage is a little bit cramped in this video because I got my project Audi TT's engine ripped apart so I couldn't push it outside. Anyway, 
This is the FB25DI. This is the new direct injection edition of the FB25, which was formerly found in the previous SJ generation of Forester. The difference with this engine is now that it puts out 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 176 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. While it is a bump in power over the previous generation and they now have a extra hole on the hood so you can raise the hood almost vertically like a Honda boy. It is not an FA20 DIT, the only correct engine that belongs in a Forester. Subaru discontinued the Forester XT because they want to make cookie cutter cars that appeal to everyone. But Subaru became great because they made weird quirky turbocharged rally car inspired vehicles. <laughs> that appealed to enthusiasts, and they need to get back on track, quick. I just stopped at a waterfall, except there's no more water falling, so I guess it's a water fell. <laughs> anyway, it's like halfway on the dirt road that I've been driving with the Forester, and uh, I have to say, even though it doesn't have a turbo, it's still fun to drive. Oh, hello. Come here, butterfly. How cool is that? I caught a little friend here in the car, a little butterfly. Here you go, butterfly. Okay, before we get going again, the X mode is set in normal, which enables you the ability to go from sport to intelligent on the SI drive. What I don't like though is the fact that what's intelligent, it simulates gears. When it's a CVT, it shouldn't. The previous generation, it just went to where it should be on the power band and it stayed flat. And I feel if you're gonna put a CVT in a vehicle, use it to its peak advantage by keeping it there at the peak power band. Don't simulate gears because that then detracts from the purpose of a CVT. It's, it's legit fast on a dirt road. <laughs> what? This is crazy. I just switched it over to snow and dirt and it does not get squirrely. It stays planted. I mean, you get it going hot into the corners and the stability control kind of works it out for you. You can hoon down a dirt road to the point where I'm uncomfortable because this is not my vehicle, so I don't want to damage it. But the question is, how good is this thing on real off-roading? So I'm gonna take out this Jeep trail behind me, which is probably not crossover soccer mom approved. And we're gonna see how well this thing does keep the X mode in dirt. Oh, this is cool. I have two wheels off the ground. <laughs> now I don't have very good off-road tires and they're inflated to like 40 PSI right now. So I'm gonna try to do this without dropping my tire pressure. And we're just gonna give it a full send up this hill. One thing my cameras don't show very well is just how drastic sometimes these, uh, these roads are, they don't look that crazy on camera. Oh my God, I don't know if I'm gonna make it up this in a Forester. Oh, this is no joke. We'll go this way. Oh! Oh my God. I can't believe the Forester made it over that. Yeah, I'm not making up any further. I'm gonna, I'm gonna know my limits and stop right here. This is a, a straight up Jeep off-roading trail. This is not for crossovers. Hopefully this gives you guys an idea of what I just climbed. This is hard to walk up in sneakers, let alone drive up. All right, little Forester, let's go. I'm switching it over to low from drive just because of what I'm doing. This does have a form of a hill descent control in the X mode, so that's kind of nice. I'm at a 12 degree roll and a nine degree pitch just at the point where I turned around at. I'm not even on the rough part, so I give you guys an idea of what this is like because it's hard to see on camera. I don't want a high center. So I'm gonna turn into it. There we go. Oh, my back tires.
fire is not on the ground right now. This is so sketchy. <laughs> Dude, this is sick. This is a Jeep trail. I have street tires and I didn't even deflate them. They're still at 40 PSI. <laughs> and look where I'm going with it. I'm doing three wheel motion. some of you are gonna say this is gonna be a biased review but when I came into this review I was so salty that Subaru discontinued the Forester XT and they dropped the manual transmission option I wanted this thing to do bad I was just like I was salty I was pissed because I had hopes of eventually buying another Forester when Forester Gump got time to retire and now that they don't have an XT, even though this thing is blowing my mind right now off-road and is a great vehicle, I won't buy another one because I like performance vehicles. And I just, this isn't what I need in a vehicle, but if you need a capable crossover that you can take anywhere and get decent gas mileage and is comfortable and is well-made, they, they nailed it. We gotta do a give it the beans test on dirt in the name of science. We're gonna give a slight launch. Ready, set, go. No wheel spin. Wow. And that was 60 on dirt. Wow. That would be slow as hell on asphalt, but on dirt, that didn't feel slow. Time to do a braking test on dirt. Ready, go. That was a, uh, that was nice actually. If you guys have never seen one of my car reviews, I do what is called a bean score as a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. But for off-road reviews, I do what's called a meatball score. It was my roommate's idea from the Toyota Foreigner review. There's a link up above to that video if you can watch that next. Trust me, you'll like it. Anyway, uh, this is kind of a hybrid review, so we're gonna give it a bean and a meatball score. I'm actually kind of hungry now thinking about that. <laughs> so the 2019 Forester Limited is gonna get a rating of one bean, but 2.5 meatballs. For being a crossover on street tires, was phenomenal off-road. I am so thoroughly impressed. I had low expectations for the new generation Forester just because there's no more XT. And uh, I, I would be lying if I said I was not impressed with this. And Subaru, if you're listening, which I highly doubt you are because I'm not that big of a deal. If you're gonna bring back the Forester XT, don't make something in between that tries to appease to everyone out there on the market. Just make a true performance crossover to go after the European competitors and take the drivetrain from whatever your next generation STI is and stuff it in a Forester. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you next week with another. Bye.